thinking tonight we would maybe just start with a more typical yoga flow and I will try to get through it um, and do some ab Pilates work on the mat at the end before we move into our relaxation. So why don't you have a seat, pick a comfortable seated position. I need to start my timer. Take a seat cross-legged or whatever works for you. Sitting up nice and tall, releasing your hands, your arms down into your lap. And option to close your eyes or just allow your gaze to fall in front of you, soft focus. And just take a moment to settle. Take a moment to watch your breath without trying to do anything, without trying to manipulate it yet. Just, just being for a moment. We don't do enough of that. Notice where you might be holding tension and try to exhale and let it go. Notice how your body's feeling, notice your state of mind, your emotional state. And then notice if your breathing has maybe slowed a little bit and allow your body to find that natural rhythm, the inhale and the exhale through the nose. Watching the breath as you draw it in. Exhaling, watching the breath as you let it go. Allowing that rhythm to calm you. Allowing that breath to regulate the systems of your body. And as always, if you'd like to set an intention for your practice, if you'd like to dedicate your practice, you can set your mind on that. Not a requirement. Some people find it distracting, but some people like to do that. So if you'd like to. And then bring your palms together and rub your hands together vigorously, creating some heat in your hands, creating some energy, some warmth. And then cup your hands over your eyes so that they're not touching your eyes, but they're cupped. And then flutter your eyelids open in the darkness behind your palms and the warmth behind your palms. And release your hands down. Excellent. Take a deep breath. Inhale, extending the arms up overhead. And laterally bend, either side, let the arm rest down to the side, turn in the gaze, looking up towards the ceiling. Make sure you let that arm that's on the mat be soft so you can bend into it. Really reach that arm, if it doesn't bother your shoulder, really extend that top arm so you feel a long stretch through your side body, taking a couple of breaths. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, over to the other side. Again, letting that arm stretch down, letting the opposite arm reach overhead, turning the gaze towards the ceiling. And pressing yourself up. And then hinging forward, forward fold, so your legs are crossed in whatever position, or if, even if you're on your knees, you could stay. And then just notice how this feels in your hips, in your knees. If it feels okay, you could walk your hands out further, deepening the stretch, but no requirement to do that. Just take a couple breaths, relaxing into it. And bringing yourself up, doing my least favorite thing, which is switch the cross of your legs. And it just feels super strange. Take an inhale, extend up. This time we're going to twist. So twisting the body, lifting, going really, really tall as you twist, and then backhand behind, front hand on the thigh. Again, doesn't matter what side you do first. Pull that back shoulder gently back. Take a couple of deep breaths. Once again, feeling the ribs expand in this twist. As you exhale, see if you can release and twist a little bit more deeply. You don't need to crane your head and look over your shoulder. Just keep your head kind of in neutral. My chin is just past the center line. 
don't, we're thinking more of the low back. And then release to center. Again, inhale to grow tall. Lift, 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 grow tall, twist as you lift, and place the back hand back, front hand on the thigh, never on the knee, sitting up nice and tall. We don't want to lean into that back hand, it's just there to support. Gently twisting. Again, think about opening the back shoulder to the back of the room, that's going to help open the chest, increase the twist, and the deeper the breaths you can do in these twists, the best it is for your lungs. And coming back to center. Inhale, extending up. And one more time, releasing forward. So this time with the opposite cross of your legs, it should feel a bit different in your hips and in your knees. Yeah. <laughs> For most of us, it probably feels worse because we naturally are gonna cross our legs the more comfortable way. I don't know if like people cross one way more than the other, but whatever your body tends to like, this probably feels a bit awkward, but maybe not, maybe you like it both ways. We're all a little bit uneven, so take a few breaths, letting it go. It's tickling. Still hurting. So. No, it's not hurting, it's tickling. It's tickling. <laughs> and coming back up, and then bring the soles of your feet together. I did tell Christoph that I figured we could probably have like millions of followers if I actually put him on camera because his comments always make me laugh, but you guys don't always hear them. Not to mention his yoga outfits. So, <laughs> but then I just be kind of laughing at him, but it's really adorable that he does this. So, as of now, he's off camera. But just so you know, it's, it brings me. You won't have dinner. <laughs> me constant joy throughout the practice. <laughs> and final time folding forward. This beef chicken and both. <laughs> and alive. It's even cooked. All right, let's come on up. Extend your legs, just shake it out. If you need to do a forward fold, if that feels good with those knees all cramped up, sometimes you just have to kind of release them and then come on over so as always i've grabbed a couple of blocks i don't know that i'm going to use them specifically but you know if you have any props it's always just good to have them around you never know when you're going to use them and let's come to tabletop hands under shoulders knees under hips i just always really like to warm up with some cow cats to get that spine <coughs> so as you inhale pressing the hips and the pelvis down the belly button towards the floor and bringing that chest up, pulling the shoulders back, making this as deep a stretch as feels good for you. Exhaling, beginning with the tailbone, tucking it under, pulling the belly button up, releasing the head to look down at the navel. And just do that a few times at your own pace, making them as deep or not as you like. But the idea here is to really get that spine moving so that when you go into your cobras or your up dogs, that you've already been in this um, extended spine position and so you're not gonna hurt yourself. And just a couple more breaths, pausing wherever you need, whatever your body needs to do to stretch. And then whenever you're finished, finish in that cat position, pressing up into the arch, really pushing into the hands, really stretching out that upper back, releasing the head, make sure you can just sort of gently shake it, no, really gently, don't move it around too much. And then let's curl those toes under and press ourselves up to our first downward facing dog. So in down dog, your hands are really stretched out in front of you. As always, if down dog is not appropriate for you, if you should not be inverted, or if during the practice you don't want to be inverted, or if it bothers your shoulders, then you can always just uh, work in all fours. And at any time if you need a break, feel free to drop down to your knees and stretch back in child's pose. That's always your option. If you haven't already done so, if you want to bend one knee and bend the other, stretching out those hamstrings. You can certainly do that. And then let's bring this out to a plank, coming out hands under shoulders, long line knees, hips to shoulders. So, as always in your plank, at any point, if you find that your hips are dropping and you just can't get them up, you're better off modifying and dropping down to knees, okay? So throughout the practice, you can alternate, modify it, or plank from toes, but at any point, if it's too much, just release out of it. Let's go ahead and all drop down to our knees to lower all the way down to the mats for the first time. 
squeezing the feet together. Inhale, sliding those hands up, coming up to the sphinx. So again, opening up the chest, opening the shoulders, and really trying to work on that back extension. So you're contracting your lower, your gluteal muscles here to protect that low back. You're actively lifting your chest and your belly away from the floor. Your abdomen might still be on the floor, that's okay. But think about peeling it up off the mat and your gaze is just forward. We don't wanna be looking at the ceiling here. The idea, hopefully mine is more or less this way, is that the, the spine is in a, a continual C curve. It's not jagged and, and kinked. If you throw your head back, you create a kink in your spine. You wanna think about one long curve. So just taking a couple of breaths here and noticing the state of your low back. When we do the sun salutations, if up dog is too much for you today, don't do it. Up dog is not for everyone, it's not for everyone every day, and it's not for everyone every sun salutation. Go ahead and release down out of that, push up and back, come to one child's pose so our knees are together and our toes are together. So that you can round your spine, wrapping yourself over your knees to counterpose against that, that sphinx that we just did. So take a couple of breaths there, breathing into the back. If it feels better, you can always bring arms down by your side in child's pose, noticing how that feels. And feeling free at any point to come to this if you need to. All right, bringing those hands back out. If you move them by your side, reaching them far out in front of you, curling back onto those toes, pushing back up to another downward facing dog. So with down dog, I often harp on about down dog and up dog because both of them can do damage if you're not doing them well. People really have this idea that they wanna press their chest to their legs. And what that tends to do is get you in a lovely down dog that puts tons of pressure on your shoulders. So I'd rather you just kind of relax all of that, actively roll your shoulders away from the ears, which makes your back muscles engage more. It takes the pressure off of your shoulders. And now think about pushing your sit bones up to the sky and driving your heels down to the mat. It should still give you that nice inverted V position without putting all that pressure and that weight in your rotator cuff, in your shoulder. Go ahead and walk your feet towards your hands, letting yourself hang over, grabbing opposite elbows. The problem is if you stretch those shoulders too much, the tendons and ligaments won't stretch back after years of overworking. And then as we get older, we end up with shoulder problems. And people who do yoga for their whole life, the idea is that we're healthier. But if you've done damage to the ligaments and the joints by not having proper alignment, that is not what will happen. So be careful in your down dogs. Always, always dial it back rather than pushing forward. Bend those knees, let the hips drop so you have a really rounded spine. And then go ahead and roll up, restacking one vertebra on top of the next. So you grow taller, 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 taller at the end. Go ahead and extend those arms and lift up onto tiptoes like you're trying to grow even taller. But then gravity doesn't let you go any further. You can only go so much. Good, go ahead and bring those heels down. Bring the hands to the tops of your shoulders and let's just make a few shoulder circles. One direction and the other direction. Good, and then shake that out and let it go. All right, to the top of the mat for our first round of sun salutations. So feet underneath hips, finding that natural alignment, elongated spine without too much of a curve in that low back. So neutralizing the spine, the hips, the pelvis. Bring the hands to heart center. Finding the focal point in front of you. Taking a moment to reconnect with that breath. Reconnect with your body, your mind, your practice. And as always, remember you don't need to synchronize with me, so I will call the cues, but you can be ahead of me or behind me. On your next inhale, opening up, lifting those arms, opening the chest. Exhale, hinging forward, long spine, releasing all the way down. Inhale, sliding halfway up, flat back. Exhale, release, bending the knees, the hands find the mat to step the right foot back, followed by the left. Your option to modify this and drop down to knees, otherwise lowering all the way down to the mat for cobra. Hands stay right where they are. Inhale to lift the chest, curl the toes under. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pausing here, we'll stay about three breaths in down dog each time. 
and then the right leg is going to lift, swing forward, finding that lunge position, followed by the left foot, forward fold, inhale flat back, halfway lift, exhale release, and then inhale to rise all the way up, extending the spine, and samasthiti, back to one. Inhale, extend. Exhale, hinging forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands to the mat. This time the left foot steps back through lunge to plank, releasing all the way down. Elbows really hugging the mat, rising up to your cobra, curling the toes under, pushing back, downward facing dog. So take stock of how those cobras felt. If that's enough for you, I encourage you to stick with them. Don't ever feel like you need to do up dog. Up dog can really put pressure on your low back. And just a nice cobra can be enough. Work on the chaturanga. Work on moving those more slowly. Work on that tricep strength. Don't feel like popping into an up dog is like the crowning achievement of your practice. Inhale, left leg extends up, swings forward. Forward lunge, followed by the right foot. Folding over, inhale, flat back, exhale, release, inhale, coming all the way up, and exhale, hands back to heart center, inhale, extend, exhale, hinging forward, we'll add a bit to it this time, inhale, flat back, lift, exhale, release, hands find the mat, right foot steps back, crescent lunge, so the knee releases down to the mat, Rising up, hands can come behind the knee or they can extend up, opening the chest towards the ceiling. So we're really driving forward, opening that right hip flexor. Couple of breaths here. When you next exhale, hands find the mat, stepping back to plank. Now if you want to work on that more advanced move, Chaturanga brings you down to hovering just a couple inches above the mat, flipping the feet and pressing up to your upward facing dog, shoulders down away from the ears. Exhale, downward facing dog. So I want to come up to a high lunge here. So right leg is going to extend, swing forward, plant, rising up, high lunge. So that back foot stays lifted, for, facing forward. Option to keep the arms at heart center, or if you want, you can extend. You can open up the chest as much as you want, creating as much of a back bend as is comfortable for you. Next time you exhale, hands find the mat, stepping back, chaturanga, or all the way to the mat, cobra, or up dog. So we're going to do a lot of these tonight. Feel free to skip them and go straight to downward facing dog whenever you want. Other side, left leg swings up, plants, high lunge on this side. And remember, hands at heart center, or arms extend. Couple of breaths. Next time you exhale, hands to the mat, step the left foot back, chaturanga, cobra or up dog, exhale down dog. Three breaths, taking a break in child's pose if you would like. You'll always have a little bit of extra time to do that here. And then let's extend the right leg, bend that right knee, dropping the right foot to the left side. So we're opening up the hip for a moment here. Right hip on top of left. Lifting through the right knee to open that pelvic area. And then coming back to center, swinging that leg through, planting it down, releasing the back knee onto the mat again. Inhale, opening up to that crescent lunge, driving forward, holding for a breath or two. And then the hands find the mat, left foot steps forward, forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, rising all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back, halfway. Exhale, release, left foot steps back. Same thing, release the left knee down for that crescent lunge position. Inhale, lifting up, and then if you'd like, release the right arm back so you're opening up through the left side body a little bit as you lean back. Either way, it's fine. Continuing to drive through, opening now all the way from the left fingertip to the left knee. 
and then cartwheel those hands down to the mat, pressing up, finding plank, chaturanga, cobra or up dog, and down dog, or skipping and going straight to down dog. And high lunge again, so the right leg swings up, swings forward, plant rising up. So remember in these lunges, we always want to make sure knee is over ankle. You can go as deep as a 90 degree bend, but you don't want to go past that. You're really driving through that back heel to extend that leg. Adding a twist so the right arm drops back, left arm shoots forward, but the torso is still nice and high. Holding for a breath. Exalted warrior, so a lot like we just did on the mat, the right arm releases down, left arm lifts up, once again opening up through the entire left side of the body. And now we're going to take this to a low twist. So that left hand comes down to either the floor or a block on the left pinky toe side, right arm extends up. And again, hand on the block can definitely help you. Feel free to use that. And then release both hands down to the mat, stepping back, chaturanga, or skip it and go straight to your down dog, working your way through your vinyasa, coming to your downward facing dog. Same thing on the other side. Left leg comes up, swings forward, plants, high lunge on this side. I like to bring the hands here, find my stability, and then extend them up. Your choice. Finding that focal point, nice deep bend in the front knee, challenging yourself, but just not coming to over the toes. Opening this up, left arm shooting back, right arm shooting forward, but staying nice and tall. Left arm releases down, right arm comes up, exalted warrior. Ooh, look at me almost falling. <laughs> and then bringing this down to the mat. So the right hand comes to the floor or a block by that left pinky toe. Left arm comes up, bringing the gaze up. Continue pushing back through that heel in the back. I sometimes find myself kind of out on the front toes. And then releasing the hands to the mat, stepping the left foot back, chaturanga, or skip vinyasa, going right to your downward facing dog. And then left leg extends up, bend that knee, dropping the left foot towards the right side. Left hip stacking on right. Oh, my back just did some kind of really nice release in this posture. That's always nice. <laughs> Cutting back to center, swing that leg all the way through, plant down, release the back knee. Inhale, rising up in our crescent lunge, and then the right arm drops down, left arm comes up. No, I did that backwards. Left arm goes down, right arm comes up. Like, what am I doing wrong? This doesn't feel right. I'm going to do the reverse of what we did on the other side. You could do it either way. But I want to get this long stretch from the right fingertips to the right kneecap. And then bringing the hands to the mat to step the right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, rising all the way up. And exhale. Hands to heart center. So hopefully you're starting to build up some heat. We don't move as fast as a sort of power yoga, shtanga, classic vinyasa class, but this is a pretty good pace. It creates heat in the body. But always take a pause, take a break, drink some water when you need. All right, coming into our chair pose. So sitting down and back. So remember, in chair, hands can be here at the heart, which is a really great place to be. Work on keeping the chest lifted pushing the knees back so they're over the hips, which means pushing the hips back, pulling that belly button in so you're not arching your back, you're not sticking out your bum. And then only if you feel like you can without bothering your back or your shoulders, go ahead and extend those arms. Breathing deeply. Next time you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Your option, right foot steps back, followed by left, or plant your hands and hop two feet back. Your other option here is to do one push-up, pressing back up, and then do your chaturanga, vinyasa, 
Whatever you do, working your way to downward facing dog. Separating your feet, mat's distance apart, take your left hand, reach it back towards your right calf, ankle, foot, or just the mat if you can't reach all the way to your leg. Turn and look past your right arm in a down dog twist. And bringing that hand back, walking the feet back to center. The right leg extends up, swings forward, plants, this time rising up, warrior one. So pivoting the back foot, rising up. Again, hands can start at the chest, and then if you feel comfortable, they can rise. So in our Virabhadrasana one, we want to work to get the hips forward. A bend in the front knee, but never coming over the toes. You should still see your toes. Torso is forward, gaze is forward, or you challenge yourself and begin to look up towards the sky. And make sure that back foot is active. So you're pressing into the pinky edge of the back foot. That should put all four corners of your foot on the mat. Help protect your knee. Transitioning, warrior two. Opening up that left side. Right arm shoots forward, left arm shoots back. Pulling the shoulder blades together. Inhaling, exhaling. Side angle bend, so the arm coming to the thigh, or you can reach down to the mat. I'll do that next time, demo it, but anybody who wants to this time, hand to the floor to a block or a bind if you want to go to that. Rising up, reversing the warrior, left hand behind the back. It can drop down, but I, that tempts you to put it on your knees, so I like it wrapped around my back. Looking up towards the sky. Good, back to your warrior two, pivoting forward in your power lunge, hinging forward, so you're leaning out over that front foot. And then we will rise up to, let's just do our warrior three. So launching onto your right foot, you can leave these hands back where they are, beside your body. Or if you feel comfortable, you can extend them out in front of you. The idea is to be in a long line from the top of your head through your heel. So you can be up more upright, you could be here, or you could be anywhere on that fulcrum, working your way to parallel to the floor. Holding for another breath or two. And then let's fold this over to standing splits, and this is another one you may find you want to use the block. You can put the blocks here, Lifting that back leg as high as you can, releasing the, leg, the head down, releasing the back down. And then stepping that left foot forward, bending the knees, rising up into chair. And forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, hands on the mat. So stepping left foot followed by right or hopping two feet back to plank. One tricep push up. And then chaturanga, vinyasa, or skipping it, going straight to your downward facing dog. From down dog, separating the feet, mat's distance apart. Releasing the right hand back for the calf, ankle, or foot. Turning and looking towards the left side. And then replacing that hand back to center, walking the feet back together, extending the left leg up, swinging it forward, planting down, Virabhadrasana one on this side. Knee over ankle, as much of a bend as you want, making sure the hips are forward. So it's a very active inward rotation of the right hip while actively planting that back foot down. We don't want to lift it if possible although that is a modification. Inhale, exhale, shoulders away from the ears. Next time you exhale, opening that out, very progressive at two. Shoulder blades pulling together, nice and strong, like someone's pulling you by both fingers. Holding for breath, notice that bend of the front knee, make sure you're getting as low as you can to challenge yourself. Coming to your side angle bend on your thigh or reaching that hand down to the block or to the mat.
and then pressing back up, reversing that warrior. Pivoting this into that power lunge, preparing to launch into warrior three. Weight on that front foot, rising up. So again, you could be right here, totally acceptable. You can start hinging forward to the point where you feel comfortable and stay right here. You could bring your hands to your heart. You could hold on to a wall or a chair. And then if you wanted, you could extend the arms. Pushing the heel away. The stronger that extended leg is, actually the easier this is to balance. And then forward fold, hands finding the floor or the blocks into your standing splits, kicking that right leg as high as you can without straining yourself. And then stepping that foot down, forward fold, rounding the back over, bending the knees, and then let's actually roll up the spine. Restacking, restacking, restacking. Inhale and exhale. All right, we'll do one more round and we will do everything on both sides in the same, in the same round. So inhale, coming to chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Stepping back or hopping back to plank. Holding plank this time. Belly button in. Spine long and straight. 15 more seconds. Three. Two and one vinyasa. Working your way through cobra, up dog to down dog. Couple of breaths here. And then right leg swings up, swings forward, plants warrior one, rising up. If you've been doing this for a while, see if you can come up in one breath. Transitioning warrior two. Transitioning, side angle bend, arm to the thigh, or those of you working down to the floor or to the mat, feel free to do that. Transitioning, reverse warrior. Rising back up, warrior two. Changing here just to pivot to the long edge of your mat, and forward fold. Releasing down into this. Stay as low as you can as you pivot back to the front end, the front of the mat, bending that front knee as much as you want or rising up. So you can drop as low as you want in kind of a variation on pyramid with more of a rounded spine, or you can lift higher, or you can bend that front knee. You could also have hands on blocks here. I'm not being super specific. On purpose, do what feels right. And then stepping that right foot back, plank position. Let's transition this to a side plank. So the right hand's going to go to the middle of the mat. Your option is to drop that right knee down and come to a modified side plank or keep that right leg extended coming to a full side plank. And when you're in that side plank, always feel free to play. You can stay right here. You can lift that leg up. You can bring that leg to a variation on tree pose. You could extend that leg. You do what you want. Stay right here. Transitioning to the other side so that hand moves to the middle. Again, you can drop the knee down, coming to the modified version or full version on your foot. Same option, staying right here. Option to lift the leg. Option to come to Vrakasana. Option to extend. And transitioning that back to plank, vinyasa, downward facing dog. Left leg extends up, 
swings forward plants, warrior one on this side. Transitioning warrior two. Transitioning side angle bend, you pick your hand position. Transitioning reverse warrior. And then rising up, pivoting to the long end of your mat, forward fold. Grabbing hold of your ankles, toes, or calves to pull the crown of your head down. And then pivoting to the front of the mat, bent knee, straight knee with blocks, just a variation of pyramid. And then stepping that left foot back, the last vinyasa of the night, up to cobra, up dog, and back to your final down dog. And then dropping down to knees, your choice, knees together or knees apart, releasing down into your resting posture. Same option with arms extended or arms by the side. And then bringing yourself up and coming over to a seated position. I just need a little Agua Asana. What? I think that's a thing. Agua Asana, right? I don't know. Sounds good. Okay, we're going to do a couple of Pilates things. So, before we stretch, come on down to the mat. I really only envision doing two Pilates abdominal exercises. So, the first one we're going to do is a spine stretch forward with the spinal roll up, which I like because it massages the spine and gets you some nice stretching. So as always, I'm gonna do it a couple of times in the modified position, and then go to the full position. You decide which one is best for you. Slower is more challenging, faster is a little bit easier. So again, work to your level. Arms extend straight up from the shoulders. Chin tucking towards chest. Take an inhale, exhale as you roll up. You can use the, the, the Pilates breath here through the mouth if you'd like. Inhale, extend the legs. Exhale, head drops between the arms, arms reach forward but stay high, reaching past the toes, belly button pulls towards the spine, really rounding over. Inhale to sit up tall and bend the knees, and then roll back, pulling the belly button back one vertebra at a time. If you fall, you can catch yourself on your thighs to slow your roll. And again, inhale, exhale to roll up. Inhale to sit up tall and extend the legs. Exhale the spine, stretch forward. Inhale to sit up tall, bending the knees. And then exhale, rolling back one vertebra at a time. If you're like, that's great, I want to work more on that, you stay there. If you want something harder, extend your legs. Inhale, exhale, roll up. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, spine, stretch forward. Inhale, sit up. And now again, your option to bend the knees or leave the legs extended and roll back slowly. You should only be having the legs extended if you can go back with nice and control and the legs aren't flying up. Inhale, exhale, roll up. I like to just continue that exhale spine stretch forward. Option here, grab a block. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, roll back. It's the lightest, littlest thing, but it actually will challenge you as you roll down. It gives you something to focus on. We'll do three more. Inhale, exhale to roll up. Spine stretch forward. Inhale, remember bend the knees here if you're working in the modification. Make it harder by raising those up, the arms up a little bit and then roll back. Or don't. Two more. Inhale, exhale, roll up. Nice and slow if you want to challenge yourself. Spine stretch forward. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, as slowly as you can. Most of the time in Pilates, slower is gonna be harder. Not always. Sometimes we use the momentum for challenge. Inhale, exhale, roll up. Stretch forward. Inhale, sit up tall. Option to raise those arms up. And then rolling back as slowly as you can. Excellent, coming down to the mat.
Release the block. Hug your knees to your chest. Give yourself a little hug. Okay, so I'm going to give you this other one in a couple of parts, a couple of options. Because this is one some people struggle with. But it basically adds movement to your uh, plow pose, halasana. All right, so for some people getting over into plow is really hard. So I want you to work on that by doing the first part of it. So we can all do this together. So bring your legs straight up from your hips. Shoulders roll down and back, palms are in the mat. We're gonna lift up the glutes and slowly lower back down. Nice and controlled. It's a lift up and a slowly lower. So you're not rolling over. When you work here, you're kind of trying to stay as vertical as possible. That's the challenge. It actually becomes slightly easier sometimes if your legs flop over. Okay, so if you're struggling, and this is something you need to work on, just keep doing a bunch of these. Next level is to lift up and over to plow, halasana. And then roll back down, nice and slow. One vertebra at a time. So the breath goes like this. Inhale, exhale to roll over. <sighs> Inhale, exhale to slowly roll back down. Head stays on the mat. The head never lifts off, and it's a really slow and controlled roll. Make sure you roll all the way back down, right? So you don't stop like part way with your butt still up in the air. You roll all the way down till your back is on the mat, hips are on the mat, glutes on the mat, head is on the floor. Don't think I don't see you. One more like this. Okay, and if anybody would like a further challenge, I'm going to add a move to this. You can keep doing either of those. You can take a break or you can roll over, plow, support yourself, lifting up into shoulder stand. And then see if you can unsupport yourself. Can you take those hands away? Lower the legs back down into plow and then roll all the way back down to the mat. So we'll try that again without using the hands for support. So inhale, exhale to roll over. Can you lift the legs up to an unsupported shoulder stand? Bring them back to a plow and roll down. So you have so many options. You can just be lifting and lowering. You can be working in that plow position or you can be working to our, from our halasana to our shoulder stand, back to halasana and down. And remember, none of this is using momentum. Nice and slow. If you have to use momentum, go back one step. So let's just do one more of whatever you're doing. And once you've gone all the way down on that last one, with control, go ahead and hug those knees into your chest. And give yourself a little rock, a little hug from side to side. Very nice. And rock yourself up to sit. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> and bending your knees. Sitting up tall. Option here to pick up a block. You can just have your hands in prayer or you can take a block. And we're going to hinge back with it. So belly button is in, chest is lifted. So the key with this one is you don't want to round over, right? So this is what I see a lot is collapsing. So you're collapsed through the abs, you're collapsed through the chest. Think about lifting that. The string right now is pulling from your sternum. So the chest is lifted, chin is towards chest. Your feet are pretty light. Belly is in. Hands at heart center or take the block. And we're going to twist, twist. So it's an inhale to center, exhale, exhale. Inhale to center, exhale, exhale. Again, you can exhale through your mouth, like Pilates. Or if you want to keep your yoga breath, that's totally fine. You'll probably find it's a bit easier to exhale through the mouth here. Let's do two more each side. Again, really slow and controlled. This one's not a race. Last one, either side. Finding your way to center, extending your hands out in front of you with or without the block, lifting the arms up, and bringing them back. If you have a block, really press 
because you get a little bit of arm work here, lifting up and down. Make sure you're hinged back as far as you can go. The block probably won't come overhead. Three, it's just slightly in front of you. Two. Last one. And let that pull you all the way up. Releasing that down, extending the legs, sitting up nice and tall, extending the arms, lift up, driving the heels into the mat, reach the toes towards the ceiling, inhale. Exhale, hinge forward in your Paschimottanasana, really, really, really reaching, 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 reaching before you release all the way down, letting the head go, letting the back go, letting the body go. And bringing yourself up to sit. Bring one leg in. I got my right leg in, high on that left thigh, facing forward, so hips are forward, knees open, toes towards the mat. Inhale to extend that up, exhale to reach forward. I like to actually reach across the body, so you're grabbing for that calf or ankle or around the foot, but just do what feels good to you. You don't want to cause pain, sometimes discomfort's okay but hopefully it feels better than worse. Take some deep breaths here. Let go on the exhalations. And bringing that up. Cross that right foot over the left, sitting up nice and tall. Twisting towards the bent knee. So if you've got your other leg extended, you can do the other side, that's fine. But you're going towards the bent knee. That hand goes behind, grabbing hold of the knee. If you want, of course, that arm can come all the way over. It's either here or all the way over. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> Again, coming back to center. And just from here, just a little bit of hip work. So grabbing under our knee, and we're just gonna rock our little baby. <laughs> Should be moving in the hip. You can make circles. You can reverse that, or you can, but this is a precursor for putting it behind your head. Yeah, I can't do it either. Do that hair? Me too. And then extend that leg in front of you, and shake it up. Other side. So I did the right foot last time, so this is the left, but make sure you do the opposite. Extending the leg, inhale to lift up top. Exhale to hinge forward. Releasing that down, taking some nice deep breaths. And then bringing yourself up, crossing that foot over the extended leg, sitting up tall, lifting, giving that knee a hug as the other hand goes behind the body. And then if you want, bringing that arm all the way over, you can just let it hang out if you want. Just like with our other twists, always opening that back shoulder, worrying a lot less about the head. Just let the head be in a neutral, comfortable position. back to center, reaching that same arm, same leg, under the knee to cradle your baby. And give it a little rock. Just doing what feels good in the hips here. We didn't do a lot of hip work tonight, so you might just feel like your hips need some hip opening action. And then let's release that, bring those legs back out in front of you. 
feet extended towards the sky. One more Paschimottanasana, inhaling to lift up. Exhale, really think of that hinge forward. So really lifting like someone's pulling you from that string at the top of your neck. Someone's grabbing your hands. You can have someone do this for you, gently pulling you. And then release the hands first. So you're still in that extended spine position, but now the hands are on the mat. The chest is lifted, abdomen towards the mat. And then maybe you stay right here. Maybe this is the best stretch for you. And if you want to continue, you can extend, extend, extend to release that head down. This is a great one to use a strap or a belt for, especially for those of you who are less flexible. Because the idea is we really want to lift out of our low spine, out of our low back. It's less about just dropping the head towards the knees and just stretching the neck, right? Good, and then bringing yourself back up, bending your knees, holding on to the backs of your thighs to roll yourself down one final time. Knees into the chest, giving yourself a little rock from side to side. Hug that right knee into the chest, extend your left leg, push that left heel away. Squeeze the right shin in, rolling that ankle if it feels good. And switching side, bring the left leg in, extend the right leg long, pushing that right heel away. Roll the left ankle. And then hugging both knees in again, transition to happy baby, reaching the hands in between the legs, grabbing ankles or feet, trying to keep the low back on the mat and just letting yourself rock from side to side. And then bringing the soles of the feet together, lowering down onto the mat. I'm just going to offer you one short pranayama here. So option to bring one hand to your abdomen, one hand to your heart center. That's just for sort of the feedback of the breath. And we're going to take, it's uh, sometimes called the square. It's a balancing breath. It's a four part breath. So it's an inhale, hold, exhale, hold, and it's all for the same count. So loosely you could say a four count, but really ultimately you do whatever is best for you. So it's an inhale for four. Feeling each hand rise, hold for four, and then an exhale for four, feeling each hand fall, and then a hold for four. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Just continue. Whenever you would like, release your hands to the mat, extend your legs. You can stay where you are if you prefer. Letting go of the breath whenever it feels right. Coming to your savasana.
gently deepening the breath again. If you're still doing that controlled square breath, let that breath go. Take a deep inhale, fill in your abdomen, your ribs, your lungs. Imagining that oxygen filling your whole body like a balloon and letting it go. Breathing all the way down your arms and legs and out the top of your head and letting it go. And then when you're ready, we're reawakening, wiggling fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles, rolling your head from side to side. When you're ready, drawing your knees towards you to roll over onto your side. Resting your head on that bottom arm if you want. Pausing here for a moment. You don't want your heart rate or your breath to quicken. Just stay peaceful. And when you're ready, pressing yourself up, finding a seated position, just like we did at the beginning of class. Legs crossed in front, arms resting on your legs, sitting tall. And just as you did at the beginning of class, take a moment now. Notice where you are on the mat. Notice that sensation. Notice how your body feels. Notice if your energy has changed in the past hour without judgment or the expectation that it somehow be better. Just notice it. Maybe it is better. Maybe it's not. Notice your breath. Notice your emotional state, your mental state. Practice tuning in to you. Take a deep inhale as you extend those arms out, reaching them up overhead, press the hands together. As you exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Take another deep inhale. Open your mouth and sigh it out. One more time. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.